All these people taking these pictures, making traffic to take a video of the sun. Like they never seen a sunset before in their life. What is this? What is this? Oh my god. Look, look at the Oh shit, oh shit, she's going down. Okay, okay. Hey, hey. <laughs> Oh man, test one, two, one, two. We're back. Episode 19. The fun doesn't end, does it, folks? Look at these people. They just completely stopped traffic to take a photo of a sunset. <laughs> if you're listening on Spotify, there's a video of what looks like somewhere in Manhattan. And you got, what is there, 100 people here? Just phones in the air on the sidewalk? And in the middle of the street, just completely stopping traffic so they could take a photo of the sunset. You got a girl twirling around in the street with a professional camera crew. <laughs> Meanwhile, some guy loading a truck all day is just trying to get home. And he's got to wait for these people to get their Instagram stories up. What are we becoming? Stop this. We look crazy. They're everywhere now. Every major city. These are the people who record the entire concert they go to. Just watch it through their phone. Why go? Eh. Anyway, you guys excited for the new Barbie movie? <laughs> could, could you imagine if I really meant that? That's what I should be canceled for if that ever happened. You do got to see who casted. Uh, you you got to see who they casted for Ken, though. <laughs> Look at this. Apparently, Ken is being played by Ellen DeGeneres. <laughs> Didn't see that one coming. Who is that? Ryan Gosling? Isn't he like 41? Isn't Ken supposed to be in his early 20s or something? Who casts these things? You know, I figured we should start the show at a positive feel-good moment for once. What do you say? Turn over a new leaf? How about we start with this clip of a woman in a public bathroom taking a mirror selfie? <laughs> How's that for a feel-good ending? <laughs> that poor girl, look at her. She's traumatized. I mean, the amount of fear this caused her. <laughs> she reacted as if there was an active shooter in the building. Holy crap. I mean, could we just take a moment to appreciate this man's impeccable timing here? This guy timed a Scud missile attack on this woman. And yeah, I'm assuming it's a man. I don't even think women are capable of producing these type of shock waves. That's what that was. <laughs> it was a shockwave. <laughs> Whoever you are, I salute you. We need more soldiers like this in the fight. That's what we need. More interruptions. More selfie crashing. Like these two. Look at them. Look at them. They prop their camera up at a club to film themselves dancing. And then they're shocked when people walk in front of it. <laughs> Look at them. Look how annoyed they get. Like they just expect people to walk around. Don't they know people are doing this on purpose because they despise you? Could you imagine them in the line at this club before they went in? Like, like one of them's giving the other a pep talk. Oh my God, we're going to be like the hottest thing tonight. Like people aren't ready for this. We're going to dance our fucking faces off. Oh my God, we should film it. Oh, we're filming it. And not only are we going to dance, but we're going to upload this. And we're going to wake up in the morning with hundreds of likes, 80 heart emojis. Everyone's going to type, yes, yes, queen, yes. Like, we're going to have to start charging these clubs to have us appear at them. That's where this is going to go. We're going to slay this town, Jennifer. Okay? <laughs> All right. I, I got to stop. See what these people do to me? Let me show some love to my sponsor for supporting the show today. And then, then we'll get back to him because because I'm not done with these two yet. I still have some thoughts here that need to be addressed, okay? So shout out to Raycon for supporting the show. They, they sent me their new fitness headphones. Uh, I've been using their other ones for the past year and I love them. I, I told you the big sell for me was how they fit in my ear. They never fall out. 
Well, these new ones they sent me, they're specifically designed for working out. I've been completely upside down with these, like vanilla ice when Suge Knight hung him over the balcony by his ankles. Are you scared? <laughs> I needed to wear a diaper on that day. <laughs> these were voted best earbud of the year by Esquire magazine. Nine hours of playtime, 52 hours battery life. This is nearly double the battery life of the other brands. 37,000 five-star reviews, half the price of the other big brands. What more do you want to hear? Right now, you can get Raycon's fitness earbuds for $20 off at buyraycon.com slash joeybvs. And to sweeten the pot, viewers get an extra 15% off with my code joeybvs15. This is a limited time offer, so get in now before it's gone. That code is joeybvs15 at buyraycon.com slash joeybvs. So remember the guy who likes to smell his girlfriend's farts? How's that for a segue? My girlfriend just informed me that she has oh. another tasty fart. Is there a tasty fart coming? Yeah. When? Soon. How soon? <laughs> Later. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I did a video on these two a while back. Took a pretty decent sh over there, Hefty. Relatively loose. Yeah, we need to call the police. Look at her. I mean, somebody save this woman. You just smell the beauty. The hell? Now what's he got her doing? Oh no, it's coming closer. Well, they saw my video. Yeah, A fan sent me a clip of him during one of their live streams where they asked him about it. I did see Joey B-Tune's video of us. Remember your friend sent it to us? Yeah. And I love that. I'm glad he did. I thought it was funny. See, now at least he's got a sense of humor. A member of the fart fetish community gets it. Go figure. Can't say the same for some people. But see, now if I were to do a video uh, on the two astrophysicists here, they'd be outraged. Like, do you ever wonder what women like Amelia Earhart would think of these people? I'm sure she'd be horrified by everything she's seen so far in this show. But I mean, it, you know, you, you got to figure there's there's women out there who are discovering breakthroughs in science right now. Amazing songwriters, artists, athletes. I mean, I shouldn't even limit this conversation to just women. I mean, people in general, they're doing incredible things. They are. Meanwhile, these two, I guarantee you, are receiving the same level of praise on their Instagram accounts as people who have accomplished incredible things with their lives. And in some cases, they're probably receiving more praise than those people. Like if you added up all the comments under posts of people standing in front of a mirror, expressionless, that say, so amazing, oh my God, this is incredible, the tally would be in the billions, possibly gazillions. All it takes is a mirror selfie, and people will absolutely lose their mind. Like when you leave 10 face emojis with hearts coming out of its eyes, I mean, that tells me you cannot believe what you're seeing right now. Like you are completely blown away by what has been captured in that photo. I mean, these people are upsetting Jennifer Aniston now, who says, social media stars are famous for doing nothing and are affecting her work, which is ironic considering she's famous for a show about people who do nothing. But that's besides the point. I love cheese. <gasps> dun dun. Yes, I do. I do. Oh my God. And a huge thank you to my executive producers, Jody and Jamie Baby Cotto. These people are the worst. The worst. They just fill space. I'm hungry because my blood sugar is going up, 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 up. They're fat. Ah, ah, stop. Ah. Do you think either of these two know how anything they use in their daily life works? Like, do you think they know how their car works? What about this guy? And all the girlies say I'm pretty fly for a white Purple guy. guy. Yeah. 
What the hell? What is this? What is useful about this? I mean, there's a gas crisis going on right now. What is it, like $7 in California now? No wonder these kids just stay home and TikTok all day. It's not even worth it to go to work in some cities anymore. $7 a gallon? You'd probably lose money. Why don't we just extract oil from this guy's hair? I mean, we're looking at an untapped oil source right in front of us. Oh, now he's making fun of people's looks. I'm unsubscribing, okay? Yeah, I got some of that last week for making fun of Maxine Waters' permanent frown. Yeah, this was from my last video. This guy writes, So basically what you're doing now is insulting other people just because you don't like what they look like. You started out as an exposer of idiocracy in today's society, and now you became a bully. Good job. Unsubscribing. Oh, yeah. Those poor soulless criminal psychopaths in government. <laughs> She's the victim now. <laughs> this woman stood in a crowd of people and told them to surround and harass people at restaurants. And if you see anybody from that cabinet in a restaurant, in a department store, at a gasoline station, you get out and you create a crowd. Anybody who has a different political view, she wants you to surround them and harass them. And you push back on them. And you tell them they're not welcome anymore, anywhere. Yeah. She deserves so much better. I'm unsubscribing. Good. That makes me happy. I'll make a part two now in your honor. How's that? <laughs> These people, man. Imagine defending somebody who hates you. These people don't respect you. You're seen as cattle to them. They mock you. Like going back to the gas thing, right? Here's an example. I don't know what state this is in, but this is a shot of a BP gas station. Gas is five eighty four here, right? And on the sign under the prices, it says, we are with you in these hard times. We are with you in these hard times. The gas company says this. <laughs> the gas station. <laughs> Who drives past that and goes, ah, my guys, BP, baby, always looking out for us. They're always thinking of us. It's, it's so cool having them close by. <laughs> like, is there actually a person who does that, that believes that? We're with you in these hard times. Oh, really? Okay, well, I'll just put my card away, and you could take care of my full tank of gas until it gets sorted out then. I mean, it's just like, could it be more obvious how they see us? But the thing is, that works for some people. They believe that. Like, they care. <laughs> it's like when Nike tweeted, stop Asian hate. How do you think the people that, have made, that, you know, that are making their shoes in the slave shops in China feel about that? They should go there and interview those people about that tweet. Just send a journalist out there to wait in one of the suicide nets they have outside the building. You know, the ones they have out there to stop the workers from jumping. Yeah, just have a guy lay out in one of the nets. And when someone tries to jump out the window crawl over to him when the net catches him, show him Nike's tweet, and just see what he says about it. Big business doesn't care about you. Nothing they say in a statement or campaign that mimics a caring person is real. You can't rob people, overcharge people, have a product that does harm to people, whether it's bad food, whatever, or, or you know, have slave labor, et cetera, et cetera and care about people at the same time. It doesn't work like that. It's just a front. They don't care about you. They care about themselves, business, money. They'll do anything to protect their profits. So if you're LGBT and you think these companies support you because they add rainbows to their logos, go check out your favorite brand's Middle Eastern social media accounts and let me know what you see. Go look up BP's Twitter account they have set up for the Middle East. Where's the rainbow? What, they forgot? <laughs> don't let these companies fool you. They don't stand with you. They stand with their accountants. Anyway, speaking of LGBT, 
Christina Aguilera decided to wear a strap on the pride. <laughs> oh, man. Where, where's the pride in wearing a strap on? Why doesn't she get a real one? I thought she was a genie. Can't she just make a poof down there? I figured she just could go from Christina to Chris with the wave of a hand or something. No? I don't get it. Wasn't this an all-ages event, too? Isn't that indecent exposure of, or child abuse if there's kids around? <laughs> oh, the world's so crazy, man. I don't know if it was 21 and over. I don't know. I, I just know if you, you were to show up like this at a farmer's market, there'd be big problems. He'd be arrested, man or woman. But because she's on stage at a big event, it's okay. I mean, aren't we striving for a cohesive society? How, how is that even possible when the rules we create don't apply across the board? You can't just be like, oh, well, it's a pride event. That's not a reason. That, that doesn't justify that. A child seeing that there or at a Denny's has the same effect on them. Like, what is the practical use of wearing a strap on in public? Like, imagine going to a wine tasting and the bartender's wearing a strap on. Like, oh, what are you, what are you crushing grapes with it? Is that how this wine is made? <laughs> like, keep it to yourself, man. There's no reason to wear that in public. Like, what I don't get is, if you're running an event or participating in an event, that celebrates your individuality, or in this case, your sexuality. Why would you be okay with someone doing something raunchy like this? Why would you want someone who would do that to represent you? I think people would expect more of a celebration of societal contributions. I mean, let's be honest. We're all discriminated against, no matter, no matter what your race is, sexuality, gender, whatever. Every group is hated by somebody. So if you're throwing an event that is supposed to celebrate who you are, why would you want someone there that's going to make you look bad? You know people will be like, oh, see, they're prancing around in strap-ons in front of kids, and they're, look, they're cheering it on. This is what they stand for. It's disgusting. People will generalize you based on this. Like if I was running that event, I would have had her thrown off the stage. I would put a statement out like all over the news, the website, all over social media that we don't condone this, but you don't see any of that. It's almost like there's this thing where if someone establishes to a group that they're an ally, it's as if now whatever that ally does, they can do no wrong. Like, do you realize allies can damage your reputation? Do you know how much respect you gain with people when you tell those people to fuck off? I just don't get it. Here's another example of this. Th this, is, uh, this was a campaign done by the, uh, the New York City Department of Health. There's these posters all around the subways now that say, uh, don't be ashamed you are using. Be empowered that you are using safely. Could you imagine? They're talking about fentanyl. Be empowered. Oh, man. Remember the D.A.R.E. program? Drug Awareness Resistance Education? The police would come in the classroom and tell you about drugs. Remember that? You ever wonder where that program went? Where the D.A.R.E. program went? Well, here it is. They, they've rebranded it. Yeah, it's no longer drug awareness resistance education. Now it's drugs are really empowering. <laughs> Don't you miss McGruff the crime dog? Yeah, now the kid's got Florence the fentanyl pusher. Great, Florence. You're really driving the message home. Great job. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. Yeah. Being ashamed of something is usually what gets people to recognize they have a problem and potentially stop. But Florence says, nah, I don't feel that way. Be proud. Be proud instead. <laughs> and the New York City government is fine with this. They endorse it. So how are they shocked when people on the outside see this and deem these elected officials incompetent? This is part of their reputation. I mean, it's almost like they've given up. It's like they threw in a towel. 
It's like they said to themselves, well, we're never going to convince people to stop doing drugs. So I guess we could at least try to convince them to do it safely so that they don't spread diseases with dirty needles. That's what they're focusing on here. That's their anger. That's what they'll tell you, right? Well, that's like saying to a rapist, well, if you're going to rape people, at least use a condom and don't be ashamed about it. Be empowered. <laughs> it's incredible, man. Who's in these board meetings? I mean, do I got to go there? I mean, like, <laughs> oh, my goodness. Nobody raises their hands and says, uh, this sounds wrong. <laughs> or what about this? Is, is there none of that? Is everybody scared to ask questions or challenge anything? I mean, it's just, I don't get it, man. The people who come up with these posters, you know, and the people who sit in a room together crafting this type of campaign, they shouldn't be in the position they are. I'm telling you, stupid people have taken over. They've weaseled their way into positions of power. Here's another example, uh, Gatorade. <laughs> Look at this. Yeah, a Gatorade health ad. Yeah, Gatorade, the, the company that sells bottles of sugar. Yeah, they're doing health campaigns now. Yeah, their health campaigns consist of uh, an obese woman doing a handstand with the word healthy as the headline. It's incredible. Gatorade fit. What's next? Uh, Twinkies fit? <laughs> Twix fit? I mean, it's incredible. I mean, this is like a company that comes to your house, removes all the locks on your doors, and leaves them wide open and tells you they sold you a home security system. Everything's backwards. I mean, as if parenting wasn't hard enough. You got to worry about the school teaching them raunchy shit. Here's something I knew was going to happen. I called this a while back. This campaign people are on to normalize pedophilia. According to current research, pedophilia is an unchangeable sexual orientation, just like, for example, heterosexuality. No one chooses to be a pedophile. No one can cease being one. The difference between pedophilia and other sexual orientations is that living out this sexual orientation will end in a disaster. Now, you mean to say it would be far-fetched to believe that eventually, if you were to discriminate a pedophile, that that would be considered a hate crime? I'm telling you, that's what these people want. They want to be normalized and accepted in society. And all it ever takes is those type of people to get into positions of power. And you know what they'll do? They'll create anti-discrimination laws for pedophiles. Watch. They'll try at least. I mean, the way things are going, they might have already tried <laughs> or are trying. Anything imaginable that you could think of that is morally wrong is or will be attempted to be normalized. It's good versus evil out there. You got to watch out for the people who have your child's ear. TV, internet, school. There's so much coming at these kids. The things these kids see today, you know, it's just that they're not capable of processing. They're being confused. Some by their own parents. Look at this. So, because pronouns, you know, those are all the pronouns, but you used they for those two sentences. Why did you use they? Because, it, because how am I supposed to know if it was a they, them, a he, or a she? You didn't feel like the name was a clue? No? Why not? Because you always say nothing is a boy thing and nothing is a girl thing. Nothing is a boy thing and nothing is a girl thing? Yeah. Yeah. So how do I grade this paper? I don't know. I should give it an A because it's what I taught. I, that's what I taught you about being non-binary. Yeah! <laughs> like, what are we doing? It's like people are trying to recreate reality with a new set of rules that just never add up. Hazel, what do you say when someone asks you if you have a little brother or sister? How do you respond? I say, I have a little sibling because they're my little sibling, not sister or brother. I mean, at some point in these kids' lives, when they grow into adulthood, there's going to be a huge portion of them that are going to feel like they've been lied to their whole lives. 
And that's where it's going to get interesting. I mean, we didn't really have to deal with that growing up. I, I, I think things, you know, the things we figured that were lies as far as people who grew up uh, prior to the 2000s, it was just like basic things that everybody knows now, like how school was just there to prepare us for the workforce, to listen and obey. They don't recognize talent or empower anyone to make it on their own, start their own business or do anything outside of the system. Ask anyone who is creative growing up that ended up working as an artist. The school didn't sit you down and go, well, we recognize that you excel at this particular craft. So we're going to pair you with people who work in the industry that could help you prepare for a pursuit in that field of work. Like for me, I worked in the creative industry for 15 years or more doing film editing, illustration, animation work. I was drawing all over my books in high school. The, the only class I was good at was art, art class. They knew I had some ability. No one ever came to me and made me feel like I could do that for a living. My parents did. They were the ones who made me believe I could do it. Thank God for them. High school didn't even acknowledge it as a career path. In a way, they sort of deterred me by making me feel like I had to go to college and do something else. I sat with the guidance counselors. One of my classmates was banging one of them. What a faculty we had at that school. <laughs> I remember I had a history teacher who would just point at kids in the class and tell them if they were college material or not. He was this big lumberjack looking guy, big white beard, f wore flannels every day. Guy would eat chewing tobacco while he was teaching. He'd have the dip in his back pocket. You could see it. He'd spit right in a cup on the desk. He'd be like, you're not college material. You're not college material. She's got a chance. What, what about Joey? Nah, he's not college material. My, my math teacher owned a liquor store in the plaza. <laughs> Drunk every day in class. You could tell. Bloodshot eyes. If you got a wrong answer, he'd just call you a genius. <laughs> my, my dad knew him. You couldn't even hold a conversation with him. I, <laughs> just like, what, a, what a pack of uh, characters. You know, you know thinking back, man, I, my science teacher, he was legally blind. He looked like the Cinnamon Toast Crunch guy. Picture that with glasses with eight-inch thick lenses. He'd ride a bike to school. Couldn't drive. No, he, he, he wouldn't even teach half the time. He'd just play a video during class and then sit in the back counter and just doze off until the movie was done. People would bring food into the class, like hold dinners, just eat, eat lunch at their desk. He couldn't even see it. <laughs> you probably could have brought a small TV and hooked up a Nintendo and played it at your desk. He wouldn't even know. My keyboard teacher got arrested, had to go to court, just never showed up to class. They'd still keep him. <laughs> you know, we, we had a vice principal came in from the Bronx who would stand in the hallway with a megaphone and just yell in people's ears to get to class. I remember my dad showed up once, you know, to pick me up, and the guy was outside yelling at the kids, right? My dad's getting out of the car, and he's standing right there yelling down the hill at the kids. My dad's right next to him getting out of the car, and he's blowing my my dad's eardrums out. My dad just walks right up to his ear like, here, I, I'll do it to you now. How's this sound? Can you hear me, dummy? I mean, like, what a, what a waste of time. What was I doing there? What did I even learn? <laughs> they just wasted my time. Anyway, the moral of the story is figure out what you love to do and just do it. And talk to people who are where you want to be in life. Pick their brain. Show them you're passionate about the same things and take their advice. Just keep chipping away at it. And if you're a parent, recognize the abilities your kids have. What makes them happy? Make their dreams seem achievable. If you just hand your kids over to the government to raise them, good luck, man. They'll never feel inspired. They'll trap them. They got to feel like someone's on their side. Someone that can erase all doubts about them achieving that thing that seems so far away. You know, speaking of touching moments, I, I, I got to say, I get some of the nicest letters from people who watch the show or the videos, but I hate that I have such great letters sitting in a DM 
in a text form. It just kind of feels like it's lost in the digital space. I'd love to be able to set up a P.O. box where I could physically hold and read some of your letters because the people who would actually take the time to write something on paper and send it to me, that tells me you really mean that. (laughs) You know, to take time out and put effort into something like that, to me, that means something. So hopefully by the next show, I'll have something set up. In the meantime, keep an eye out on my social media. If I get something set up before the next show, I'll let you know. Oh, and by the way, if you're on Patreon, we're going to start offering the show uncensored on there. So for example, today's show will be on there with no censors. It's also good in case, you know, YouTube age restricts my show or take it down. So it'll live on there. So, you you know, you could see it with no bleeps or blurred out images or anything like that. Just the raw show the way it's supposed to be. But on that note, we'll end it here. Listen, take care of your kids. Hug your mom. Tell her you love her. And I'll see you next time. Talk to you soon. (laughs)